Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I am here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, Leicester City, nil. Aston Villa, nil. And I'm sure we are probably in a bit of a better mood than we had perhaps envisaged before the game kicked off. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, not bad, mate. I think, to be honest with you, I was quite optimistic. Both of us were. Yeah, we? I think we were, to be fair. And then um, as kickoff, you know, normally as kickoff gets closer, you get more optimistic, don't you? That's normally the way it works. You sort of wake up on the day of the game, you go, oh, could you? But Villa's recent form has meant that it goes the other way now. You start <laughs> off optimistic at the start of the week, and then as match day gets closer, you're like, oh, no, nah, I don't know, actually. <laughs> but, <laughs> not feeling uh, this Yes, one. mate. Yes, um, not bad, not bad. I think you and I are basically going to dive into why it should be seen as a good thing, which, which some people haven't quite managed to get on board with, have they? For sure, mate, for sure. But before we get into that, we have a word from today's video sponsor. Dan, have you ever wanted an app that collates all the scores and news from your favourite teams in the whole of Europe, Dan? Have you ever wanted that? It's, it's a constant need of mine, mate, because there's always news. That's the thing, is that we're, we, we love this game. We love the industry of football because it's ever-changing, mate, and you need a place to keep up with it all. And we have that place exactly for we you sure guys. Do, it's one football Guys, this app is genuinely, it's life-changing. It's great because I actually already, I, I use it. Um, so it's like, it's great because it's where I pull the stats from for the podcast. So it's like, there's also, there's all that new stuff as well, but you you can track all of the players' stats from like across Europe for all the different leagues, for continental football as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dream. It's a dream. And the best part, mate, is it's free. It's free. And guys, it would help support the channel massively. If you check that one football using the link in the description down below, we promise you guys won't be disappointed. So guys, if you haven't checked that one football, make sure you do so using the link below in the description. It helps Dan and I out more than you guys could ever imagine. Just click the link and download it, please. Even if you've please. got it, uninstall it and download it with our link. Um, on knees. But less of that, mate. This is really important. And, you know, the title of this will be, you know, Aston Villa, Stop the Rock away at Leicester um, just as a mental note for you while you're editing this um, <laughs> but it's it can only be a good thing Villa didn't lose mate and I think away from home I mean for the first this is the first scoreless draw we've had this season and, and draws have been few and far between in any case so to to not concede is a plus side of course Villa didn't score which I think can be a problem but I think we've shown over the course of the season um, that that is a department we don't necessarily lack in but I think it's certainly an aspect of our game which we could perform much better but I think the root of of that issue in this game mate was just playing it safe and again I don't really have much of an issue with that but I think if you look at almost any of the counter-attacks that Villa instigated uh, and if you look at the highlights package from match of the day or however you guys have seen it, all of Villa's shots uh, that seemingly Ollie Watkins took, pretty much all of them, I think, mate, it's pretty much just him on his own. Ollie was quite isolated, um, which is a problem if you're going to try and win games, but Villa looked much more compact. And I think it's kind of, you, you at the moment, we can't really have either or can like it's, it's one or the other we can't keep a clean sheet and score goals at the minute you have to choose which is more important I think away from home Jared prioritised that just right this time mate yeah 100% mate you can't lose if you keep a clean sheet so right now whilst we're struggling for form and everything like that nil-nil doesn't feel so bad to me um, but Ali works really hard mate he works really hard um, you're, he was handed a very dif difficult task and, and you know with Ali for a lot of this season it hasn't really felt like the work rate has been there. He didn't seem to quite be the sort of the workhorse that he was last season, but he was back to his best in, in that regard today. I mean, to be honest with you, mate, it's a pretty sad state of affairs that the first time I'm going to reference on a Villa podcast is the amount of pressures our striker made. But, you know, such is life <laughs> at this moment in time that these are the things we need to get excited by. Um, 38 pressures against Leicester City, which is the, his most in a Villa shirt ever and the most of any player this season. So... That reference is just how hard he was working out of position, but you're absolutely right, in position, mate. He did the most. Um, he really did. He, he fashioned some chances out of very little. Um, I still maintain that whilst it wasn't the best Villa performance, we could have actually maybe even won this game. Um, 
Bailey has the most guilt edge chance, I think, pretty early on. Yeah. Um, that was for me, I, I, f- I feel like the, the big chance from this game that what could have been. But yeah, if, if it had took that away, it's a different story, but that's a different problem altogether, mate, is that, you know, we're really starting to struggle and putting chances away. Um, we've scored just two goals from an XG total of 6.9 in our last five games. That's five goals we've missed out on if, you know, you listen to the expected goals. So we're really struggling to put the ball in the back of the net at the moment. Oli did the most, but... Yeah, to see guys like Bailey sort of put that chance over the bar. I know it was early on and everything like that, but um, you look back on it now and you think that was probably our best chance to win the game. And that that kind of leads me on nicely to where I think the discussion needs to go, mate, because Leon Bailey, by by any means, it wasn't a perfect performance at all. And I'm not going to sit here and, and, and defend him um, as some people may expect, uh, you know, but this is a player who's had a, you know, a serious injury. He's not really played a lot of football either. And I think that the kind of the accusations that are being thrown about, or he doesn't care. He thinks he's better, all this kind of stuff. I think it's complete nonsense. I, I really do. I think it's, it's really unfair to label him as, as someone who doesn't care. I think he, he wasn't having a great time. And I think, you know, he's not the only player who could have potentially looked disinterest, disinterested, sorry, in, the, the last sort of 10 games, I think it's fair to say, mate. So to, to kind of hear him labelled as, as someone who doesn't care does kind of bother me. Yeah, it wasn't a brilliant performance, but again, it has to be considered. Players don't, like, how often does anybody, mate, come in and hit the ground running, right? And I'm going to reference Newcastle because that's all Villa fans seem to be doing at the moment. And, you know, we've got to give them their flowers, mate. They're doing fantastic. What a job Eddie Howe's done. Look at how long it's, you know, we're in April, mate. And we're only just seeing the best of Bruno Guimaraes, aren't we? Like, yep. he's a player yep. who couldn't even get on the pitch when they first signed him and saying, what are they doing? They've wasted all this money. It takes time to acclimatise to a league. You can't just come in and hit the ground running straight away, especially when you've had to overcome the obstacles in which Leon has. And I completely understand the argument, where is Emi Buendia? Because for me, Dan, and I know you agree, mate, he has to be one of the first names on the team sheet. The tenacity he shows. And to be fair, when you talk about hitting the ground running, arguably Emmy has been one of our better players of the season. So I'm almost contradicting myself there, but he's had the taste of it in England yep. before. So there's no excuse for Emmy Buendia coming in and, and struggling because he hasn't really. And again, he's used to the league, but for someone like Leon, he needs a run of games. And I just feel, mate, and it, it pisses me off so much. Why can't Villa fans just be patient? Why can't we give these guys a chance? We signed him for thirty one million pounds. There's gonna be pressure with that mate, but we've seen what he's capable of in the Bundesliga. I don't want to see people calling him lazy. I don't want to see people questioning the desire. I just think it's only fair, and you know we said this about Ingsy, mate. Players need a run of games to build momentum, to build confidence and to integrate into the team. Leon can't have played more than 12 games for Aston Villa and none of them have been full 90s realistically, have they? Like, let's give this guy a chance. You know, the guy who we saw at Everton at home, that is what Leon Bailey is capable of replicating consistently given a run in the side. 100%, mate. 100%. It's such a different league, uh, the Bundesliga. I think you really need to take that into account. Um, the Bundesliga, you know, the defending isn't the best in the league. It's very transitional. You get a lot of high lines. Um, it's The games are often quite frantic and end-to-end, uh, which is great for a spectator. But it means that players like Bailey, who are very skillful, very quick, operate like sort of running in and behind and playing in those kind of systems, thrive. And that's why we've got the best out of it. So it's a very different league for him to come out and try and perform in. And I think you may, if, you, if you look at the biggest transfers, out of the Bundesliga um, sort of in the last sort of five years or so um, there's a trend in that it's taken a lot of them a lot of time to get up to speed Um, Ousmane Dembele is the biggest signing ever out of the Bundesliga he looks like he's only now only now under Xavi for science to find his feet at Barca you've then got Jadon Sancho Kai Havertz Lucas Hernandez uh, Kevin De Bruyne Christian Pulisic uh, Aubameyang Jovic so what there I think you can look at Sancho uh, Havertz, it took a little while to get going. Um, Pulisic as well, st- like a while. He hasn't really embedded himself in this Chelsea team yet. I think he will. And Luka Jovic certainly hasn't. Naby Keita's in there as well. Timo Werner. 
um, Sebastian Allaire, uh, you, Joel Linton as well. Look at the amount of yeah. guys that have come to the Premier League out of that group and haven't made an impression initially. That's what, but at the same time, you only have to look at the, what they're on now. You look at what Sane's come to, um, KDB, Abamyang, what the levels he reached, Kai Havertz, what he's doing now. I mean, Jaden Sancho will come good. He's, he's a very similar player in a lot of ways. He will come good for United, but it's not happy. It takes a while and you have to give these players time. I mean, Joel Linton has taken two years and a position change for yeah. Newcastle to get the best, best out of him. But they're finally starting to see the fruits of that £44 million pounds they paid. So Joel, like Joel Linton, all these guys, they're perfect examples of what Leon can become if we give him time. But that's the problem is that we as a club don't seem to like that. I, I think the same, it's the same situation with Gerrard all these guys, we just need to give them time because they they are capable of great things, obviously, but you can't expect it straight away, especially when I think they come from the league or the Bundesliga. For sure, mate, for sure. And when Deer needs to be worked into this system somehow, and I think there's a video in Felipe Coutinho and his future, Dan, that I think we'll probably touch on at some point next week. Um, but, you know, for me, if you look at the average positions, um, and we'll get them on screen if we can remember, it's looking a lot more like how Gerard wants his system to look, which I think is a positive thing. Um, JJ and Coutinho are quite close, but you know we can see the fullbacks are sitting much deeper. That's naturally going to happen with Young, but as well, I think to be honest, with with that sort of trio on Leicester's left hand side of Castagne, Lookman, and, and uh, often Dewsbury Hall, I think it was who was kind of finding himself in those positions out on that left hand side. Villa did really well to deal with that, to be honest. I think on his day, Lookman can be uh, a trouble and we all know how good Castagna was before the injury. I don't think he's hit the heights since he's returned, but I don't think you could ever sort of rule him out for being um, a threat at all because he's always in and amongst the goals and the assists. He's just he's just one of them guys. Um, I think, as well, you know, to, to, to kind of circle back on the goals, I think you, you need to look to try and get Coutinho in this game a little bit more. And... I think it kind of begs the question, mate. I'm sat there, I'm sat there and thinking, this squad was geared to play 4-2-3-1. And this fourth, this 4-2-3-1, however you want to look at it, isn't too dissimilar. Okay. It really isn't. But in a 4-2-3-1, you just have more bodies in and around that number 10, which is where Coutinho just needs to play, mate. He he really does. If you want to get him involved. We don't want him on this left-hand side. I think we're going to see him isolated. We saw him isolated yesterday, um, and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of Coutinho slander, and I can understand it to a certain degree. But you know, we've seen it's so hard to influence a game out on that left-hand side, especially when you don't have the support, especially when you don't have a lot of possession. Uh, I think Villa had what 33% possession yesterday, Dan. Which you know, when you consider. Uh, 36% sorry away from home isn't it isn't not normal you know I think especially with how Villa were going to co- set themselves up in this game but it's not like you've got a, a Grealish on the pitch to to protect the ball and to look after the ball and to you know that's not really Coutinho's gambit really um, so I think it is a bit unfair but I think Villa have to look to get Coutinho in as a 10, I think we can play Leon on the left. I think we can play Emmy on the right. And now with Marv coming back as well, a little cameo from Marv and uh, a lovely little cameo from Tim Arogabunam as well, mate. I just think Villa have to play 4 2 3 1, mate. At some point, Gerard has to sort of realise that this system right now isn't going to get the best out of the players. And I think rather than sticking to your guns and I think maybe making players look a bit worse than they are and almost airing them out to dry you have to play to the strengths of the squad mate surely yeah I, th- I think we're getting to that point you know you and I had this debate a little while ago mate where you know Gerard's sort of in two minds because with not much to play for this season it it does you offer a good chance for him to try and bed players in and get them used to the system in which he wants to play. It's the system that he played at Rangers and everything like that. So I think it's clear to see like why he's taken this opportunity because it's a free hit, basically. Yeah. Look, despite what Villa fans are sort of saying, like we're not going to get relegated. We've got nothing to play for, really. We've got <laughs> knock on wood. With... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
we got some good games like where we can pick up points. So yeah, it's a good chance to try and get players used to the system that he wants to play next season. But on the other hand, like, you can't just completely sacrifice um, everything that there is to play for. And, you know, we've said many times that there's pride on the line, there's money, there's there's a lot that's still left, you know, whether we finish sort of um, where we finish in the bottom half of the table, it looks like. So, yeah, it's a sticky one, mate. I think Coutinho, um, for the first time, was starting to see the other fans doubt that transfer, maybe. Um, I think it's one where, uh, you know, all it takes is for him to, as you say, mate, get back in the right position, drop a masterclass, and we're all clamouring like for that deal to become permanent. So it's, um, I think there is a little bit of recency bias there, but yeah, I think we, we saw a lot of positives yesterday, mate. And um, I think mainly on the defensive end, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of work that needs to go into how we go forward. But I thought the defensive performance, honestly, it was like reminiscent of the early Gerald performances where we looked super solid. Yeah. I thought Mings was fantastic. I uh, thought he was really solid. Um, I never really felt too worried. I mean, I was just going forward where things felt a little bit stodgy. It was good to see Marv come back. So on the defensive end, we seem to have made a real step. Um, it's just obviously when you're not scoring goals, that sort of goes for a burden a little bit because that's what people want to see. But defensively, I thought Villa made some real progress considering, you know, the amount of goals we'd shipped in the last few games. Absolutely, mate. And, you know, Leicester, for, for all of the possession, didn't really threat us too much other than uh, a James Madison free kick, which I think Emmy dealt with relatively easily. Uh, they accumulated an XG of 0.24 compared to Villa's 0.76. Now, you know, when you look at that, in this game, mate, Villa had, what, 11 shots, three on target, okay. Um, and it was, you know, there was a relatively solid defensive performance from Leicester as well. So again, I guess we have to give them a bit of credit there. Four blocked shots, um, four of our shots were off target as well. But ultimately what it comes down to, mate, in games like this is taking your chances, right? Villa score a goal and it's a masterclass yeah. and a away performance. Yeah, yeah, no, ex exactly that, mate. Exactly that. And that's what I was saying at the top is that if Leon puts away that chance, it's that's exactly what this is. It's, it's an early league, clean sheet, 1-0, three points, back to Birmingham for Norwich. Um, so I think you really have to take things with a little pinch of salt. I don't think, honestly, Gerard's too much to blame. I know the system isn't working, but, you know, you, we look at the last game against not, uh, Spurs could have been very different if we took those chances in the first half. You know, if, if we could have easily gone into halftime winning then. And I don't think we'd come out and perform in the way we do in the second half. We could have easily have won this game. We had the best chances in the match by far. You know, the XG stats we just reeled off have told us that. So, yeah, mate, it, it could have been very different. I don't think this is a bad performance at all. I was happy just to stop the rut, as you said. That's the main thing. And we've got two very winnable games coming up. I expect us to go and win against Norwich. Um, it'd be interesting to see how Joel does. I want to see Buendia come back. It'd be really, I think it's a big game for him to show his former side that he hasn't left for nothing. Um, and obviously Dean coming back and everything like that. So it's, it's a big game for a number of reasons, but it's one that I think we can win ultimately. For sure, mate. But we'll get into that later on in the week and previewing that. Guys, there'll be plenty of content this week. Don't you worry. Um, and we're going to re-record that ad reel as well when we get a bit of time as well this week. So yes. don't you guys worry. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you are downloading Bond Football using our link in the top of the description. Subscribe for more content. Let's try and finish the season on a high with the channel. Your guys' support recently has been uh, remarkable considering how crap Villa have been. So I just want to give you guys a massive shout out. Anybody who isn't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. It's not hurting anyone. It's not hurting you. It's not hurting us. If anything, it's just helping us grow the community, which I think is what we all want to do. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And up below.